Hello again everyone, today we're going to try and stealth mod a PS1. We've got some uh, 12C 508A pick chips which we are going to use to make a stealth mod called the one chip for the PS1. We're also going to be using uh, solder, screwdriver, pick programmer to make the mod chip, kinar wire, electrical tape, glue gun and a solder iron. So we're going to make a clear way and start to disassemble the PS1. Right, so as you saw in my last video, if you have a look at the PS1, there is six screws three here and three at the top. One is hidden underneath this warranty sticker which we're just going to pierce through and unscrew. So let's get on with that. Right so that's our six screws removed. They're quite stiff to remove as they were put in by a machine when the unit was assembled. So put them somewhere safe, we'll need them for reassembly. And then open the PS1, put it on its front and just lift the lid like so and put it somewhere safe inside the unit there's a bit of tape here we're just going to break that bit of tape like so and pull out the ribbon cable here and pull out this ribbon cable if we lift this unit like so you can get a decent pull on it just rock it back and forth and then put the laser unit somewhere safe right now at the front we just lift off this heat shield like so this comes away Again, put it somewhere safe, and then lift it from the front here, and push up like that, like so. Just lift it from the unit, and put the base somewhere safe, and it's the main ball we're going to be working on. But we're going to put this to the back for now, and we'll go program our pick chip. So I'll come back to you as we're about to program. So this is our um, pick chip flashing program. As you can see down here, it says chip selector. So we need to select our pick chip which is a 12C508A 12C508A, there we go and as you can see from this image here we need to place the pick chip in the program like that so I'll show you what's doing that now you see the yellow dot at the top on the actual pick chip as well there's a dot at the top or one of the corners well that represents the yellow dot on the screen so if we take our program which we've got here and unlock it so four legs up, one, two, three, four, and it goes in these four like that, and we just lock the chip with, lock the zip clip like that, so the chip's locked, and then we'll connect this to the machine. Right, so back in our flashing program, um, we click file, and load, and we're going to load the one chip dot hex on the desktop, which is there, so just double click that and it loads the code which you can see there so now we just click program uh, click yes and it's going to say ROM erased fuse erased, continue program clip and we'll say yes when I click yes you'll see it right into the chip, you see the program flashing that means it's written, programming complete um, we'll just read it back and you can see the one chip and we'll click verify and it says data verified so that's our uh, pick chip programmed so we'll go back to the PS1 and solder it in so that's where the chip's going to sit we've got a piece of wire size for point one we're going to solder in point one now first point is here Right, so that's point one in and we'll solder the chip once we've got all the wires in so we'll do the chip last so now at a point two uh, that's that point two in three and four are on these chip legs which we're going to do now three is the second leg in from the right on the bottom and four is the second leg in from the left on the top. It's point three in. It's point three and four in. It's point five in. That's point six in, which was very, very tricky to that resistor. That's point seven there. Let's get point eight in. Right, I'm going to glue all these points before I solder, them up, solder the other ends to the chip. So, start with this point here. Now 
let's glue point five. So gluing serves two functions, it's five and six glued in. It um, insulates our points and it also holds our wires in place so they don't come loose. Point eight. Here. Right, so now it's time to start soldering the wires to our chip. Um, we're going to place our chip on this big chip here, make a clear way. Tiny amount in the centre of the chip there. Let's glue the chip down, like so. Let's start, start soldering wires to our chip. So what I'm going to do is um, tin all these legs as well. So, move the wires out of the way. So tin, we just apply heat to the leg. And then bring the solder to the leg. Like right, so. I'll do this for every leg. Heat to the leg, solder to the leg. That's the first four legs tinned with solder to the other side. Heat to the leg, solder to the leg, solder, solder. Heat to the leg, solder to the leg. And heat and solder, heat solder. Right, so that's all the that legs tinned with solder. So now we just need to put the wires to them. So that's wire one in. Wire two is from this resistor here. It's wire two in. Uh, wire three is this wire from the chip. That's wire three in. So one, two, three, um, four. It's this one. All right, so it's one, two, three, four in. So on the other side, this is five, and that's it. It's so five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to get in with five now, which is this one is five. It's five in. That resistor six in. Yeah, this one's six. That's six in. Uh, this one's seven. That's seven in. So that's why it's a power cable. Goes to pin eight. That's wire eight in. So you can see that's all that wires in. Let's try and get a better shot. All that wires in there. Um, just going to test it. Assemble and test now. Right, so I've got it in a semi-reassembled state, just so I can test it with... The, this is a regular backup, this is just Tombi. Um, this is just to test to see if the chip works. If it works, I will um, put some glue over the actual chip to insulate it, reassemble, and then test it with a stealth backup. So let's power on the unit and hold down the disk close button. You can see it's booting up here. And it's reading the disk. And it's booted that first time. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some glue on the chip, reassemble it, and then test it with a stealth backup. We're going to try Final Fantasy IX. Alright, so we tested it, and it was working with our Tommy backup, but we've just noticed another problem. The same problem as last time, really. This heat shield is not going to sit back on properly with that mod chip in place, how it is. It's lifted up here. So what we're going to do... So let me take it back off. We're going to lift the chip and we're going to seat it there and glue it down there and insulate it there so it'll have enough room there so we want to lift, we want to keep all the wires in place but lift it up so good job I didn't use too much glue, let me just put this on its tripod so and the way the wires are, it should just fit there nicely alright so that's the tip lifted up and we're just going to gently Move 
move it over to here. Get some electrical tape to insulate it. So you can see the chip here. I'm just going to put some tape around it to insulate it instead of using glue. And then it should be good to go. So basically, if you can see there, just put it like that so you've covered all the legs. And then we're going to fold this over on top of it. Just sort of like sandwiching it in. And that insulates it. And now it can just sit down here. And this heat shield should go back on fire, which we're just going to test now. Also, one last um, mod we want to do while we've got it open. It's the same one as last time. Is this open close button here. And we want it permanently closed in case we ever decide to use um, any boot discs like action replays or code breakers or the like. So to do that we're just going to put a glob of glue, glue on it and then hold it down. So glue on the button and hold it down with our finger. Ow ow ow. Hot hot hot. That's done it. So now reassemble like so. Get you in that position. There we go. So now put the lid on as well. Correctly. And now we just need to reinsert our six screws. Right, so now we're on the testing. This is our old PS1, and this is the one we've just modded today. So I'm just going to show you that this old PS1 is modded, and it boots Tombe, which is a non non anti mod chip, non stealth game, just a regular game, and it's PAL. So as you can see, this old machine boots the game. There we go, it's booted and booted into Tombe. Now, if we try in this old machine, an anti mod chip stealth game, which we've got here, Final Fantasy IX, and it's also the wrong region, it's also NTSC, which is the American region. So, let's try to boot this in this old modded PS1. You see it's gone to the like browser, memory card, CD player, so it doesn't boot it. Right, now if we move it over to our newly modded one with our one chip mod, and let's move the wires across. Since the wires moved across, and we test it now with our new PS1. See, so it's booted first time. Also, notice it says Sony Computer Entertainment America because it's American, but it's got the SCEE -E for Entertainment Europe code at the bottom because it's a PAL PS1. And there it goes booting the game. Uh, Square Enix USA. So another successful modification. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.